if there are no questions now, we will continue um, with our next presentation. Thanks a lot, Josef and Klaus. <clears throat> Uh, so the last presentation uh, were mainly, we also in the last presentation, we mainly heard examples where optimization measures were necessary. And the next presentation will be about uh, two best practice examples. And it will be held by Christoph Aste, who is uh, Inter Alia CEO of the um, engineering office uh, Aste Energy and also Institute Director of the Institute of Energy and Environment uh, in Carinthia, Carinthia. And through his work in several projects, uh, he gained a lot of experience in planning uh, and quality management of biomass district heating systems and uh, is also project leader in a huge solar thermal project in the, uh, in the huge, huge solar thermal project uh, in Grumpendorf, Ebental und Lanzkron Villach. Um, and this is also what he will talk about today. He will show us uh, the two flagship projects where alternative energy, so alternative renewable energy were included, uh, where alternative renewable means uh, others than biomass. <clears throat> and these are the district heating system in Grumpendorf and also the energy island Lanzkron Villach. And what I forgot in the beginning, uh, I also wanted to welcome our external regional stakeholders from Kosovo. We are very happy that you are joining us uh, today. So Christoph Aste already started his presentation. You can start now, Christoph. Okay, Heidrun, many thanks for the nice uh, uh, introduction and for the nice invitation. Hello to everybody, uh, especially anche to my friends in Italia. Matteo uh, was uh, quite a long time ago in our biomass plant and um, it was a very nice time when, he, when we were a bit more in connection. Um, uh, maybe you can see the biomass plant uh, which uh, uh, um, is presented in my uh, folia here. I'm sitting in the second floor up there where we have also our institute uh, and um, I will tell you a bit more about our project, what we have done and why we call it Biomass Heating 2.0. The main focus was um, <clears throat> to find ideas to save biomass, to uh, maximize efficiency of our our biomass heating plant and uh, let us go through. To my person, um, okay, and maybe I have to start the presentation first. Takes a bit longer. And now I have to do the same as my colleagues before. I hope now it's good for everybody. Um, yes, works. Um, okay, fine. Um, to my person, I'm, I studied forestry and mecha mechanical engineering and uh, um, yeah, uh, I'm working as a management partner in this biomass plant and also as a management uh, partner in hydropower plants as a planner and I'm also working for QM Heizwerke um, uh, in, in Austria. Um, in Kumpendorf, we started to develop this project, um, yeah, 2011. Uh, it takes us a while to, to do it like we have done it. And we is the Regionalwärmegruppe. The Regionalwärmegruppe is a group of um, uh, biomass district heating plants around the Wörthersee. I'm looking actually at the Wörthersee. It's quite hot outside. <laughs> um, um, and uh, this, uh, this group is running now more than 25 biomass plants and we are trying to, <clears throat> to, to go one step after the other. So from 2011 to 2015, um, we, it was this uh, planning and construction phase and the competition and handover to the project um, was at uh, October 2015. Still, we have to do some things, but uh, I will not talk about these things, what what is the next maybe the target was high efficiency this was the goal of the planning team then we want to 
um, to, to, to save uh, uh, biomass, then we want to achieve um, new coordinated uh, ways to use technologies and components like uh, flue gas condensation, residual heat utilization from the flue gas condensation, which was already mentioned by Josef Berndtaler. Then we, we integrated a, a heat pump into this uh, flue gas condensation. Then we integrated the thermal solar system and the PV system. So it was quite a lot of <laughs> things how to integrate and to optimize it. And then the big, uh, big challenge was also to, to, to do to find an intelligent control system to, to control all these different uh, uh, heat uh, producers. Um, and this was uh, a challenge. And then after this uh, construction phase, we had to operate it like we are doing it now. And still we find some new things and better ideas. So I think the process is not over. The biomass source. We are running our biomass plant with uh, biomass from the woods. Sometimes there's something coming from the sawmills, but mainly from, from the woods. Um, and uh, as you all know, we, 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 we are using maybe like all the others, also branches as fresh material directly from the forest. This was just a, a cutting nearby the biomass plant. So um, we are using very wet material, in fact. Um, in the group, we are the <clears throat> biomass plant, in the regional, regional biome group, we are the biomass plant using, um, let's say, nearly everything uh, which, which is not used by, the, by other um, biomass plants uh, due to their um, not so developed um, uh, technology. We have two boilers uh, from Kolbach, um, 1,500 and 490 kilowatt. Um, and we try to, to find low emission. We find reliable rate load for all applica applicable fuels and water contents. So we want to use everything what we get as, as best as possible. We want to long lifespan of maintenance uh, of the combustion chamber. So we have to look at uh, uh, good ways uh, to, to fulfill these, um, 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 how to say, uh, targets. Then we have um, fast and low effort installations due to prefabricated models. So it was quite fast um, uh, installed. We want to use regional companies from Carinthia, but we are in the lucky way to, to use uh, yeah, boiler fabricators uh, just around the corner, which makes fast service available, uh, which is uh, especially in these days uh, a, a, good, a, good, a good thing to have. The condensation uh, was, I think, already quite well explained from Josef. So I will show you um, uh, this cross cutting here. And um, this uh, um, condensation plant uh, has in our, uh, in our wording two phases. So we, we speak about the step one and the step two, which is the upper layer here. And I will tell you then what's with the second layer. And then the first layer, um, we are trying um, to, to get as much as possible out of, the, of this condensation unit. If the real numbers you get, uh, you get uh, in, in, in the next folios. Um, in fact, we can um, bring the temperature level from the return flow from the customers uh, from 48 degrees to 55 degrees Celsius in the average. This is uh, our first. Um, step uh, with the condensation unit. So 48 is a quite nice temperature. Sometimes we are running also with 46 degrees Celsius, but average 48. And uh, yeah, and this delta T with the seven uh, degrees uh, Kelvin, we, we, we raise this return flow. On the next step, um, we are using the second step in the condensation unit to to bring this, um, um, how to say, uh, re remaining heat in the, um, from the flue gas in this in a special smaller heat exchanger or heat heat storage, in 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 fact, which is running um, uh, the heat pump. This this small um, um, boil or this small buffer is used as a source for the heat pump. 
And um, the normal buffer temperature here is something around 25 degrees Celsius. So this is a nice for, for running the heat pump. Sometimes we are coming up to 34 degrees, depends on, on, uh, on, the, on things which I want to explain on the next folio. This is the heat pump. The heat pump is an industrial heat pump. Um, and this heat pump uh, run from 25 uh, degrees Celsius as a source energy. And, the, and the, the, the main output is that the heat pump um, uh, raises the temperature from the uh, return flow temperature from 55 degrees Celsius coming from the first step, you remember to 65 degrees Celsius. So in fact, with these two steps, we come from 48 degrees Celsius to 65 uh, degrees Celsius, uh, which is a quite nice Delta T uh, done only with the flue gas condensation unit uh, in, in um, uh, connection with this heat pump. The theoretical uh, CUP of this heat pump is 4.2, but as I already told you, this is theoretical and the practical one is a little bit, not a little bit, is quite lower, uh, we have to admit. Um, we try to find um, uh, this uh, control system and one of the core points is to, to find the intelligent energy, energy storage because everything is coming together in the energy storage and we had to find a lot of, um, yeah, we had to find some management tools to, to, to develop this buffer system. And we developed it, it with the company of Hoval, and Hoval now is using it as a as the normal um, 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 uh, heat plant tool to to steer such kind of of, of uh, biomass plants. And I think um, we did a lot of development work here in, in Krumpendorf for that. Um, on the roof here, just above my me. <laughs> We had installed 200, 200, uh, sorry, 200 square meters of uh, solar thermal system, and in front a bit of uh, photovoltaics, which uh, yeah, which is quite nice, but it's uh, it's not a big thing. On the solar thermal side, we are producing annually something around 110,000 kilowatt hours a year, maybe this year a little bit more, um, and uh, the. The flow of this um, uh, of this um, solar thermal system is going into the buffer system, but the question was, what do we do with temperatures below 60 degrees, which will come uh, um, from the roof down uh, to the the heating plant? And with 60 degrees, uh, we can't do not a lot. Sometimes it's uh, only 40 degrees, especially when it's cloudy or foggy in, in, in Klagenfurt. And uh, with this temperature, we are running the, the small buffer system for the heat pump. Yeah, this, this buffer is also loaded with the low temperature of the solar thermal field on the roof. The, um, um, and the, the PV system with this 5,000 kilowatt hours a year is nice. We are running just one pump with that, but um, in fact, we need a lot more of PV. Uh, and that's why we, we try to get admission for a bigger PV uh, field nearby, but uh, we are missing the possibilities from the authorities. So still in project phase. This is the solar yield with, uh, of Kumpendorf, um, for sure in June, July and August quite nice, but uh, in winter time uh, it's not worth mentioning. Um, the solar field in operation, maybe you can see here um, on this heat exchanger to our buffer system, uh, 95 uh, kilowatt. On, on, on power and the, the temperature here, you see this uh, flow of uh, 75 degrees, which will go on the, on the middle layer in the buffer system. If it's, if it's uh, a lot higher, then we bring it to the highest point in the buffer system. And if it's lower, as I mentioned, uh, of um, 60 degrees, then normally we put it to the smaller tank where we are running then the heat pump. 
Here you see the control technology. Now it's a little bit more of, of, of uh, integration. We have uh, these two biomass, biomass boilers. We have a, an oil boiler, uh, stand, a standby solution. Then we have on the other side the condensation units, the step one and the step two condensation unit. And on the roof, the solar field. And everything is getting together as a heart in, the, in, this, in this buffer system. And from the buffer system, we are going. Uh, the flow is going to the uh, to the customer via our uh, district heating grid. Uh, now we are selling around uh, 10 gigawatt hours a year in Grumpendorf with more than 100 uh, customers. So uh, I think it's a quite big uh, solution, um, and it's and it's still growing. Um, the energy efficiency starts with the customers. Yes, this was also one of uh, uh, my uh, colleagues were speaking about that. And one thing is uh, what we tried to gain is this delta D of 46.5 degrees um, of Kelvin, um, which makes us uh, this, um, that which gets us the chance to reduce the energy for the pumps on the one side, but it uh, gives us the possibility to do a very good condensation, and um, 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 and this is the main the main point uh, for for having the possibility to do this efficiency. And we did we had a big effort to reduce the return flow in each customer, and we were very uh, peculiar on this on these things in the secondary side. The condensation capacity on on, uh, on this folio, maybe you can see um, that uh, by uh, we have here 1,000 kilowatt um, output of our biomass plant, and 280 uh, 218 kilowatt were produced in step one, and 122 were produced in step two. So this is quite nice. 30 33.6 um, percent of the whole load was done by the condensation unit, which um, I always say, which is really the money for, uh, for, our, for our plant and which uh, uh, gives us the possibility to have a little bit more in our pockets. Um, the, the curves, they are quite nice. You see, this is the, the biomass plant one and the biomass, um, uh, the, the biomass boiler one and the biomass boiler two in blue and green. And the condensation unit um, in red, and the heat pump here in magenta, and um, and the condensation unit is is going quite nice uh, nicely in in in, 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 in a band uh, load or in a in a in a, in a very constant load. Um, and the the heat pump is nearly the same load yeah sometimes it's a little bit higher sometimes it's a little lower and this this bluish one is just when the load is too high for the for one um, for one boiler then we have to use the second boiler so I think this is a quite constant nice flow in winter and in summer it's totally different because in 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 summer um, uh, we we yeah we we only heat the, the boilers of our customers in the a few hotels and the, the police academy and things like that are in Grumpendorf. So you see here, the, this is the biomass, uh, the small biomass boiler and the solar field. Still, the solar field is too small to cover all the load, which would be a very nice asset. But uh, up to now, we had no chance to enlarge BV and solar field. So this would be uh, a long-term project to, 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 to fulfill everything in summer with solar. What we are trying now uh, here is to find an energy balance. How high is the energy balance or how can we come to an energy balance? And if we measure input, uh, we especially measure input because we are buying biomass via megawatt hour, which is a bit un usual but here in this plant we are doing that and we are measuring it and uh, um, we, we know the production of the biomass plant in summer and the small one the, 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 sorry, the big one the small biomass uh, um, biomass boiler 
the oil boiler, which should be also mentioned, um, then the solar field, the condensation, the heat pump, also with the electricity input. And the, we need some heat uh, in the heating plant because we have, a, we have uh, uh, eight offices here in, in our heat plant. That's why we need something also here in the heat plant. And the majority is going to the, uh, to the, to the district heating grid. And if we look at the input and the output, we can say that we are nearly 99% which is, seems to be for especially for for mechanical engineers a bit of uh, unreliable but uh, due to this higher heating value of uh, of wood uh, you should consider that this is possible and that's why it's a, a nice um, i think it's a nice picture to show what is possible and uh, where we can go just the same thing as a picture um, so that you have a bit of an imagination um, of what is going out and what we have to go, to what we have to give into the biomass heating plant. Okay, so this was the first project of, from my side, and uh, I hope it, I'm not too boring. But uh, if if not, then I want to show you a, a second nice project. I have to look at the watch, uh, Hydron. Should we start the second yeah, one? Of or? course, please, please start the second one. We have uh, about 10, maybe 15 minutes. Better would be okay, 10. Okay, then like 10, 10 minutes would be fine if Great. if it's fine for, for you. Of course. Um, my, second project, <laughs> my second project, which I want to introduce, is the Energy Island Lanskron. It's what It is a district of Villach, yeah? And um, uh, there, um, um, a new part of Villach was constructed with 1,200 inhabitants and we had the chance to, to be in, uh, really from the beginning on in this project. And uh, here you see these houses and on the houses you see these solar fields um, and these are our heating this is our heating field, yeah, with our small heating plant on uh, on on the side. It's not a real heating plant. It was an existing uh, uh, building, and we we used it uh, uh, where we put our buffer system inside and all the technique what we needed for this biomass uh, for this uh, solar heating plant. The nice thing is here we have we had these eleven houses. And uh, we, we try to implement a low temperature grid, which means low temperature uh, flow of 90 with a return flow of 30 degrees Celsius. And we constructed a buffer uh, with uh, nearly 7,000 uh, 7, liters, 7, 70,000 liters um, uh, to, to buffer the solar thermal um, uh, energy, what what was coming, or which is already, uh, uh, which is coming to the to this buffer system, we installed uh, also a heat pump um, uh, to to use it, like you have heard uh, Justin Kumpendorf before, and we connected everything together with Kellag Wärme, which is the main uh, district heat uh, runner in in Villach. Um, because we were sometimes we are using uh, uh, heat from a Kellag Wärme and sometimes we are producing heat for, for the Kellag Wärme. So we are really a prosumer in this project, which is maybe a new nice role. And uh, it was in a nice uh, cooperation and partnership with Kellag Wärme. So we did all this um, 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 piping really from, from we, are, we, are, we, are, we were connecting the houses, but we were looking at all the installations so that really um, the, uh, this uh, low flow grid or low temperature grid uh, was possible. I'll jump a bit. We, put, we, we, we had uh, an installation done with 1000 square meters of solar thermal, which is a quite big system. Then this water, water heat pump, and then this district heating, as I mentioned. And um, um, yeah, and uh, so this connection uh, gives us a new, a new chance um, because if we have too much heat in the solar thermal system, normally you have a problem with uh, too much heat in a solar thermal 
system is running into stagnation and the pressure in the system will raise. On our Please side, we have, yeah, sorry, we have, um, you, you can switch your presentation mode so we can see it oh, better. Sorry. It's a little bit smart. Yes. Thank is you. it better? Yeah, okay. better. Um, and uh, so with this um, with this uh, system, we can install as much as possible onto the house roofs. Um, but um, with these uh, high temperatures in summertime, like now, we have not a real problem. We we will deliver it for Kellogg, and Kellogg is quite happy with us in in such kind of the role. This is the heat generation in the winter time. In the heat generation winter time, you see uh, still there is something coming out from the roofs, yeah, um, um, something maybe like uh, uh, 200 to 300 kilowatt. Then the buffer, the buffer is uh, um, having not so high temperatures, like here we have uh, 44 degrees Celsius in the buffer system. And in summertime or in springtime, it's a bit different. Here you, you see that we get uh, something around 500 kilowatt uh, from the roofs and the buffer system uh, will be heated up to 76 degrees Celsius. So this is um, how we are running our, our project. Some, imagine, uh, some images, how, it's, how it looks like, our construction. I'll jump over these fields because it's a bit boring. Um, but here you see the temperature curves uh, and uh, these curves, yeah, they are very related to the sun. If sun is here, uh, we will get temperatures um, up to 90 degrees. And if no sun, <laughs> we have no no output. This is the the, the main uh, the main um, aspect of the solar. Okay, we will jump a bit over that because if you are really interested, you can ask me the real numbers. Um, but this is for solar field. Uh, these are these different solar fields we analyzed and. Um, we did all the hydraulic, uh, which was some, for me, it was also sometimes quite new because of this high dimension and the, the possible problems will, which can occur. And there are some problems which occurred. Um, but the, from the solar side, the, the yield is okay. The yield is really like uh, we, we have planted. Um, and um, primary flow, for example, something around 80 degrees return flow, something around 46 um, degrees Celsius, mass flow six cubic meters an hour, and the spread was about 33 degrees uh, Kelvin, which is uh, for us a, a, a nice spread. Um, yeah, these are these solar fields. And now we have to speak about the security of supply because if solar is securing, it's nice, but if no, if no sun is out, what, what to do? So we are connected to the grid of Kellogg Wärme, and um, we are also having this uh, heat pump, which can run the system with lower temperatures and bring the, the flow up in a higher level. This is uh, done with this heat pump. It's, an, it's not a big installation, it's a quite small installation, but it's uh, running all the time through, so it's for us it's 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 a nice it's a nice possibility. Here you see uh, no biomass, no dust. Quite funny for me as a biomass uh, district heating planner. The buffer system, the buffer system was one of the core points, uh, and we really had to invest a lot of ideas and 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 know how to to find how to dimension it where to put the 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 valves um how to measure and where to measure temperatures and we have a lot of uh, temperature measurements to 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 bring it into the system here you see the buffer management um in this point the buffer is completely filled up with heat and then in the in the night, um, you see that the buffer is is really used, and in the morning we we are starting again with the production via solar. And this is the scheme of the solar backfeed into the district heating system of Villach, because if we are running over 90 degrees, we have to to to, to give uh, um, energy to the grid, and uh, in this case we we, we are just 
putting 400 kilowatt out of the solar yield to the district heating of Kellogg. Um, and due to that fact that it is a very big grid, uh, they are fine with, with such a, how to say, drop in, drop off production of solar. Uh, the district hit between these houses uh, was done uh, by us. Um, uh, this low temperature grid, we call it, um, done with Austroflex. Um, and uh, here you see some, some feed in. Uh, uh, how much do we really feed in to the grid of, the, of Kellogg? And it's, um, it's only a small amount, let's say it like this. The solar, solar coverage, which uh, is um, very important for us to, to say, okay, how much do we really cover uh, by solar? Uh, from May to September, it is significantly nearly around 100%. But in winter time, we have to, to get energy from the, uh, from the grid of, of Kellogg. So this is the energy flow. How much uh, put to, to can we put in? This is the so solar thermal energy. This is the um, this is uh, uh, Ke um, Kellogg. Sorry, this is the heat pump. This is uh, electric electrical energy for the heat pump and electrical energy from the pumps. And this is um, on the on the one side. On the other side, this is uh, energy going to the to the grid for heating and for hot water preparation and some losses and other uh, uh, energy needs. The balance throughout the year, um, as, a, as, a, as I have shown you the, the solar coverage, in, from September to April, we have to get energy from, from the grid, but on the, on the other months, we can, we can give uh, energy to the grid. From the economical part, yeah, Solar is, is uh, not the big, how to say, possibility to get rich. <laughs> um, uh, the discounted cumulative cash flow is around 12 years. And um, yeah, without uh, subsidies, for us, it would not be possible to, to do a second project like this. Um, many thanks for giving uh, me your attention and I hope uh, you, you are a bit interested to that what we are doing and uh, I will hope that we can see us in real in the next time and you're also invited to our heating plant if you want to come we I'll, I can show you thank you and I give the floor back to Hydron thank you very much Christoph very interesting projects. Uh, they show very well that uh, the inclusion of alternative renewable energy is able to make a big contribution to the energy efficiency of district heating systems. Um, yeah, are there any questions? or inputs. Maybe... Um, this is Matteo speaking. Matteo. Hi, Matteo. <laughs> nice to hear you again after so many years. <laughs> and, <laughs> and congratulations for the really good work you have developed in these years. And uh, I have one question for you. Concerning the, uh, the first project you showed us, that's very interesting combination of different technologies in a very smart way from my point of view. But my question is from the management point of view, uh, this is possible because you are taking care of this kind of plants or is it possible also to develop it with, uh, let's say a municipality? Hi, good question. Um, I think uh, if you are a pilot, you have to take care by people knowing what they are doing. That's that's maybe what what you wanted to hear and what's the what is the reality. Um, and if we are coming to a, a phase where we say, okay, this is state of the art, then we should hand it over to the to the how to say to the public. In fact, in in the regional in the regional Wärmegruppe. Um, 
the, the, the first phase was, how to say, intensive to develop. But now we are in a phase where our um, service team is doing nearly everything. So um, we, I'm not anymore really very much um, inside the 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 the, the, the real uh, the real work uh, which is running uh, just two floors uh, below. Um, we are trying to find some some optimization still. Still, we we, we find we, we find some new uh, possibilities. And we have to, to develop such systems um, not only once, but we have to de develop it steadily. And uh, this is for Kumpendorf maybe a bit special. And from this project Kumpendorf, we, we give some advices to, to all the other projects in the Regional Wärme Gruppe. So that, uh, for example, we developed just uh, for the city of Feldkirchen, uh, we, we developed a, a biomass heating plant and we, we, we brought in all our experience from, from Kumpendorf. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And hope, hope seeing you in, in Kumpendorf once <laughs> again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think if anyone is is more interested also to to see one of the projects on site um you can contact christoph aste and i'm i'm sure he's he will uh welcome you in corinthia yeah Fine. so <laughs> christoph is this true yeah yeah sure some of, your, of, of the colleagues in, in this meeting, they have already been in, in Gruppendorf and yeah. yeah, maybe we can do something together. Who will know? Okay. Uh, I'm going to complete my vaccine scheme in the next week. So <laughs> okay, it's really possible for me to travel from July on. <laughs> Good to hear, Matteo. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so if there are no other questions, um, I f thanks Christoph Aster. Very interesting inputs. Um, I want to suggest to uh, have another small break, about five minutes. Um, let's start again at uh, 12, 12, 11. Uh, just for uh, getting a coffee or coffee or, or uh, going to the toilet. So see you in five minutes.
Okay, so welcome back. I hope you are still fit for the final part of the training. Uh, and now I ask Christian Ramersdorfer from the iInTech for the last uh, presentation of today. You all know Christian, but just a few words. He is uh, part of the pro program management of the QM Heizwerke system in Austria and will now talk about one part of plant monitoring according to the QM system, which already is uh, the first part of what we will learn in the fifth train the trainer session in October. Christian, it's your floor. Thank you for introduction um, and welcome uh, to the last presentation of the day, uh, which is uh, about uh, plant monitoring uh, according to the QM system. Uh, yeah, with a short overview also about the uh, QM Heizwerke milestone five of the uh, QM process, uh, which is highly interlinked with uh, plant monitoring and optimization also. Um, yeah, and this uh, presentation is also uh, an early content of the last plant uh, webinar of this series, uh, which is uh, then TT5, uh, which will deal with the QM system more in detail. Uh, so, Milestone five is the last milestone. You will hear it afterwards. So for today, we, we start with the end of the QM process at the train the trainer five. You will hear more about the, uh, all the first steps. So what is the content of today's presentation? Um, first, I would like to give a short overview about milestones uh, five, as I said. Um, and then in a second part of the presentation, uh, I would like to tell uh, more about uh, monitoring and the requirements according to QM for uh, the, the monitoring and data acquisition. And in the last part, um, benchmarking uh, will be a topic and key performance indicators, which is uh, also related uh, closely, I think, to the presentations uh, of today before and uh, yeah which will uh, make the circle around hopefully somehow <laughs> and uh, give some more uh, information on data we have from uh, the plants in, in our database. So first uh, to give you a, a bit more orientation where we are in this uh, QM process um, here you see an overview of the QM process which guides a, a district heating project in best case uh, already very early from the beginning of course not with the project idea but uh, um, yeah uh, at least for when there's a preliminary study done this is already the phase where, where the QM process should be started and, and one first milestone then so down to milestone four then when the plant is uh, actually constructed and commissioned and milestone five is uh, the last milestone uh, to be reached at the end uh, and has as very important contents monitoring and optimization uh, so from a more administrative point of view let's say uh, milestone five is a very uh, uh, it is uh, checked if the quality requirements we have, which have been agreed uh, in the Q plan in, in the beginning of the QM process are actually met in, in uh, practical. Um, and uh, yeah, a very important point is planned monitoring on, and evaluation of operation. Um, Usually milestone five is uh, reached about uh, uh, one year after operation really started, uh, but I will come uh, to that later on again. And for all the date details, um, uh, what uh, has to be 
done for milestone five, uh, according to QM, you can see the, the Q guidelines. Uh, there's a, a checklist um, with more detailed information. For example, also uh, it has to be checked if the technical documentation is really complete, uh, things like that. So why uh, is already at the beginning of, of a plant's life uh, optimization uh, and, and a, a topic and one might ask why should I optimize the plant that just has been built and commissioned so if the planning and execution has been done professionally everything should perform perfectly but uh, there are several reasons why this is not the case because um, um, so there's always some planning uncertainty due to a range of fluctuation in the heat demand calculation uh, and also a trial operation uh, that uh, should be done during commissioning cannot uh, represent all operating conditions that occur during uh, an entire year of operation. So in the beginning of the operation phase, uh, you still don't know uh, how the plant will uh, behave for all the states that can occur. So there's also a lack of operational experience for the control dynamics of the plant and uh, also especially uh, changing fuel assortments which uh, can occur during uh, a whole year of op operation or, or also quality in fluctuations in quality like uh, for instance uh, the water content um, uh, have uh, uh, yeah, uh, a big influence on, on the uh, operation behavior of the plant. So uh, in the beginning, uh, it is uh, not uh, possible to, to operate it uh, in an optimized way, most probably. And what is last but not least, a very important thing is that um, uh, often the plant heat sale is, is not uh, um, reached already in, in the beginning of the operation phase so um, and, and only often uh, after a few years uh, of operation so um, maybe of one or two expansion steps of the grid so, so not uh, the whole uh, heat uh, demand which the, the, the plant was uh, designed for is uh, uh, has to be uh, supplied from, from the very beginning. So all this together uh, makes it uh, um, important to, to do a first uh, monitoring and op operation optimization step already at the beginning of the operation phase, uh, which is covered by Milestone 5. Um, but uh, yeah, overall it should be uh, the target to establish a continuous plant monitoring during operation and also continuous operational optimization in, uh, yeah, in, in, in pre or in, in um, uh, defined uh, time steps, let's say. Um, so that it is uh, standardized uh, to, to uh, monitor and, and, and op um, optimize the, the plant operation throughout the whole life of the plant. So what QM does is uh, that uh, monitoring and optimization is compulsory for milestone five. What has to be done uh, for that, uh, you can see in the QM planning ha handbook uh, for further details, how to proceed for uh, the, the optimization evaluation or the data evaluation and, and, and what has to be done according to QM. Uh, in Austria, we also have uh, another instrument that has been in, uh, introduced, uh, which are the annual operating reports uh, in order to support uh, the uh, monitoring and, and, and also, uh, yeah, similar a bit like the the benchmarkings uh, animate also the the operators to to uh, really examine the, the, their data and and uh, uh, but I, yeah that, that will come later on again too then and it's uh, 
in Austria that that uh, uh, so for the first ten years of operation, it is um, uh, mandatory to to uh, upload uh, these operating reports uh, to the database. But um, yeah, um, <laughs> the, uh, I will come to that later on. Um, monitoring and optimization is uh, often a critical point, uh, which is not implemented in the way it uh, should be, because many operators uh, are not sufficiently concerned uh, with the operational data of the plant. Uh, and a very illustrative example of that uh, is uh, what uh, once came up uh, during a plant visit. So. Um, what is coming on the next slide you maybe saw already today, but uh, <laughs> I would uh, like to show this also in a, a bit uh, different context because um, after a look on, on the operating data, uh, the control and operations strategy of a plant was questioned and uh, the responsible operator answered, we had 50 groups visiting our plants and all were enthusiastic, so how can you criticize my plant? So this uh, is then what the operating data looked like. <laughs> um, yeah, you already saw this uh, as an example for uh, operation that uh, is uh, valuable to optimize, I would say. <laughs> so um, this plant has actually three uh, boilers uh, which all behaved in a similar way with stop and go uh, on the whole day. Uh, so this is what you see here is only about 24 hours of um, operation of the boilers. And in addition, there would be a storage available, so it, it should not be um, necessary to, to uh, do a stop and go uh, from three to 800 kilowatts uh, and, and back uh, like it is done here. Uh, so you see how uh, what big uh, potential uh, uh, for optimization can be uh, given and, and, and how, how big is the gap uh, between the uh, self-perception of this operator who, who thinks everything is fine and uh, my plant works well because uh, every one is uh, very happy when when he visits it, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it, uh, doesn't really look on, on the data and, and uh, misses maybe a lot of uh, uh, optimization potential, therefore. Uh, so what are the requirements according to QM um, for monitoring equipment? Uh, these are uh, defined in, in uh, standard hydraulic schemes. Uh, the documents that are translated into English currently um, within the Antwan project. Uh, but of course, uh, this is only a part uh, of these standard hydraulic schemes. The, the, um, they are more than just a hydraulic circuit solution or, or, or a list of, of um, measuring points, which is also uh, a content of these documents. So, so in, for each hydraulic uh, circuit, hydraulic scheme, uh, there, there is a chapter uh, with, which is named data recording for operational op optimization, where you can find a detailed list. Uh, I will show an example afterwards. But um, yeah, this is more, a uh, also at the same time a, a holistic solution regarding a uh, hydraulic circuit solution suit and a suitable control concept for this hydraulic circuit solution and also con uh, control strategy as well as monitoring. So um, much more than just a, a scheme or, or a measurement point list. But this uh, will be in detail then uh, also part of the next webinar would be going too far for now. Um, yeah, what is also very important is to have a clear definition uh, how the data recording and monitoring uh, should be implemented and 
this is also mandatory according to QM already during the planning phase so already at the very beginning of the project you have to think about uh, what uh, will the hardware look like for the monitoring um, what kind of hardware will that be is it the data, data logger will it be done by a plc and or instrumentation and control system how can i access the data this was also already mentioned in the presentations before this is a, often a very critical point so be sure you have access to your data uh, then also regarding the uh, format and uh, handling uh, so how, uh, on the next slide I will show some more details and on that and uh, what is also very important is to uh, get clear responsibilities um, who will export it and evaluate the data because there are uh, more than just one uh, players in in uh, biomass project uh, i would say so there's the operator there's the queue manager there's uh, a lot of people involved so uh, it has to be clear who uh, is in charge for monitoring or supervised monitoring and also then uh, evaluate the data and and uh, examine uh, optimization potentials. So more, a bit more details about the requirements uh, for the data recording itself. Um, QM recommends to have um, automatic recording and storage of all measured values in high temporal resolution. What does that mean? So about a um, uh, measuring uh, interval of 10 seconds and a recording interval of five minutes mean values as a minimum standard uh, and it's also recommended and very important to uh, have a user-friendly export option for all measured and also the calculated and um, uh, stored operating data in a data format that you can read so this is really a very important thing because uh, yeah a lot of measuring points to have is nice but you also have to be able to have a look at them uh, in a uh, uh, evaluable form let's say um, and what is then also very important is to do regular backups uh, of all the operating data uh, yes on independent system so be sure that uh, the data is safely stored um, so now I would like to show uh, an example also this uh, scheme you've already seen today but uh, yeah <laughs> because it's a standard hydraulic scheme <laughs> it uh, should look in a similar way every time so <laughs> uh, this is just an, an easy example um, from uh, just one boiler a heat storage and, and the connection to the grid um, I will not go into the technical details here just to show that uh, within these hydraulic schemes there are also um, sorry I just want to yeah doesn't matter um, you, you can also see the um, the measuring points with which are clearly indicated with reference numbers so for instance two a T201 uh, is, is the outer temperature, then there's a boiler outlet temperature T212 and so on. And uh, as we uh, already heard today also, these in, in case of a storage tank, there are these uh, five temperatures uh, over uh, different uh, height levels of the storage. This has also deeper reasons on not the because it's fancy to have five um, uh, uh, temperature sensors installed in a heat storage but there is a this is again part of this holistic concept and, and part how uh, an important um, uh, element of how uh, the, the contour strategy then uh, is, is working but yeah uh, more on that uh, as I said for the next webinar then um, and to each of these hydraulics, uh, standard hydraulic schemes, there's then um, uh, a corresponding measuring points uh, list. So uh, where it is written in detail what uh, reference numbers and, and what are the names of the temperatures. 
and this is just uh, to show that um, yeah from according to QM um, if all measurement data from this list uh, is recorded it is ensured that uh, a comprehensive evaluation can be made uh, which uh, also takes into account all important points uh, according to QM so uh, yeah it's more or less a checklist so if you can uh, make a, a check to all of these points you're sure that uh, you have all the data you need for an evaluable uh, monitoring so now I would like to uh, come to the operating reports which is uh, the other instrument in, in Austria I already mentioned um, also to support plant monitoring uh, these operating uh, reports are uploaded or, or the first of, of these uh, operating reports is uploaded to the QM database in, in Milestone 5 and um, man also mandatory to do that in, in Austria um, uh, we, in, in the QM database there are already more than 2,100 reports or uh, re really um, extensive uh, data reservoir to, uh, which can be used um, also for for the, the uh, yeah calculation or evaluation of, of uh, key performance indicators I will show later on um, these reports include uh, basic data like fuel quantities, uh, monthly and annual values of the produced heat, of all producers, sold heat, um, electricity consumption of the main plant components and so on. So, uh, and that then um, only monthly and, and, and yearly values, so no high resolution measurement data. Uh, in other words, all the data that uh, uh, are a minimum that should be recorded for plant recording anyway so it should not be too much effort for an operator to um, uh, um, create such a report yeah um, it is a very important feedback to the funding authority uh, and the plant operators and the queue managers and on the base of, of the data given by this from these reports uh, also benchmarking is uh, enabled uh, which is a service by uh, Quim Heizwerke sorry <laughs> um, and these benchmarkings um, are uh, thought to motivate uh, the operators to uh, yeah, evaluate the operating data and identify optimization potentials and implement optimization measures in the end so to get a bit closer um, concerned with with uh, what uh, treasure on, on data they have um, um, yeah this is how uh, or a, a short overview on how this benchmarking works um, we calculate key performance indicators from uh, based on the reported operating data and uh, then the performance uh, of a plant is compared to other plants and, and to target values uh, so um, the benchmark can show individual figures an example is, is shown uh, on the right side here uh, for the uh, specific electricity consumption of a plant uh, and you see uh, there's also uh, a range given from uh, minimum to maximum of, of comparable plants uh, and then an average from the database and then where uh, the uh, plant uh, that is the benchmark um, exported for is, is, is lying and the, if it is possible from the reported data also historical trends are included uh, as you can see here with um, monthly values uh, even in this case for the, the, the several plant components um, and 
if there are more than one operating reports in the database already with uh, trends uh, over the, the years uh, that were reported. And also an overall uh, rating of the plant is then uh, um, created like uh, a cumulative uh, performance indicator from from all the, the data that was uh, uh, reported. Um, so this is also uh, uh, so here I would like to go more into detail then regarding these key performance indicators, which uh, has also um, a very close connection to the presentations before, I think. Um, in this table, you see some important key performance indicators. Of course, this is only a selection. Um, I excluded the um, economic uh, performance indicators here because, um, yeah, this maybe can be re uh, really different uh, um, depending on the country, where you are, or the local conditions. Um, the target values shown here are according to QM or uh, mandatory according to uh, for, uh, from the funding uh, authority. Um, and the mean values um, are from 215 up to 364 plants from the QM Hatswerk database. Uh, these are mean values for plants all over the pool, let's say, so not uh, because the, the benchmarks are created uh, and um, compared to, to values of comparable plants in a similar uh, setting of, uh, of, of the, the size of the uh, heat production and, and customer um, uh, structure. But this is just overall, so very rough look, but uh, I think uh, some really interesting effects can be seen. Um, so, um, what is a very important uh, indicator is salt heat compared to plant heat. Uh, and, and uh, of course, target would be to reach 100%. And what you can see here that in, in average, 11% uh, lower is reached. So, this uh, uh, is interesting that, um, um, yeah, um, obviously, um, in in the um, most uh, cases, it is not possible to come to the uh, 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 so amount of salt heat than was uh, planned. So this is a, a really um, could get a, a really risky uh, situation regarding uh, economic viability, of course. Uh, it looks better for linear heat density, so there's a target value of 1,200 megawatt hours per year and trench meter. Um, the mean value of the plants is 1,143, so not too bad. Um, um, and of, yeah, as we also already heard today, this can uh, be very different in the individual cases. So can be possible that uh, also with numbers below 1000 uh, and uh, viable operation of a district heating plant is already uh, possible but you have to have a very uh, close look of course then uh, yeah um, regarding the full load operating hours uh, this is shown here for for all the biomass boilers of a uh, plant uh, it is even higher than the target value with about uh, 2,600 uh, on average. Also annual efficiency of the heat production with, where the target value is 85% uh, is slightly higher in, in, in a cross cut uh, across all the, the plants here uh, with 86%. Um, Overall energy efficiency so with the uh, heat distribution included uh, is already different. So a target value would be 75% here. And you see that the mean value is at 71, uh, lower than that. Also for the uh, heat losses of the district heating grid, um, 
yeah, considerably higher in, on average than target value, I would say. So instead of 15%, uh, which would be the target according to QM, is, uh, is a, it is about uh, uh, or 18.6% on average. Uh, so what you can see from this um, in, in general, let's say that um, obviously it seems to be um, a bit easier to get the plant uh, itself under control. So, uh, because what we can see here, of course, only with this very rough look, uh, full load operating hours do not look too bad. Annual efficiency of the heat production itself does, doesn't look too bad. So, um, the, the, the heating central uh, is something that usually works well. Uh, and and in general obviously there's more potential to optimize the grid so um yeah because heat losses are uh, higher than they should be on average uh, also this salt heat compared to plant heat uh is is an indicator for that maybe um yeah there's also still a potential for uh, optimizing the average temperature difference difference between supply and return of the district heating grid of course uh, yeah it's close to, to the target value but as we heard today it, uh, yeah uh, the more the better I would say <laughs> that you have here in on, on the temp temperature difference and for the last point uh, one um, three minutes uh, just yeah okay thank you I'm already coming to the end then um, yeah, um, something, um, a good point again is, is the specific electricity consumption, which refers to the, the, the one uh, benchmarking example from before. So there, on average, uh, the, the plants low, lower, uh, lie lower than the, the, the target value of 20. Uh, yeah. So this is where I already come to con the conclusions for today, um, for my presentation. Uh, so monitoring and optimization should be established uh, as an integral part of the ongoing operational management and performed periodically. Um, what uh, I showed here uh, regarding QM milestone five is just an initial step for that. Uh, in the best case, uh, uh, this uh, should be established as a, a, a yeah, standard procedure during all the, the plant life. Uh, and um, in any case, uh, there should be done an in-depth evaluation in case of technical or economic problems, of course but also before uh, major grid expansions or plant expansions and modernization. Actually in Austria here, you have to start the whole new uh, QM process from the beginning again uh, in order to get uh, uh, funding money for, for that. So uh, yeah, very important to do this here. And the last point I would like to mention is that uh, monitoring data uh, is a treasure and uh, a really reliable planning basis for a sustainable future development of a plant. So operators really, really should uh, take care that uh, this data is safely recorded, stored, and from time to time have a critically look on it. Uh, and with that, I would like to say thank you. And oh. I'm open for questions. <laughs> Thank you very much, Christian. <clears throat> this was the optimization topic from the perspective of the QM Heizwerke. And uh, it showed once more how important the steady monitoring and watching of the system is. And also the documentation and benchmarking of the, of the data. So, are there any questions concerning the last presentation, but also concerning the former pre presentations? 
we have a bit of time left. Johanna. Yeah, um, thank you very much, Christian, for that interesting presentation. You said that monitoring data is a treasure. And I have a question concerning your database. Um, from what I understand, this database is closed. So only the QM people and the operators can um, have access. Um, do you use that data for some kind of um, statistics or maybe um, communication work, for example, concerning the, the fuel um, amounts that is used? Um, yes, we we do evaluations from, from this data, but uh, yeah, of course, um, how should I say, um, we uh, consider the, the data safety, so <laughs> are there only um, things like, like this uh, performance indicators where uh, data from more than just one plant is uh, calculate, uh, calculated into and, and um, uh, yeah, uh, considered uh, is, is then uh, also uh, published. So, and we, we do such evaluations from time to time, uh, but again, yeah, um, most of it is, well, I don't know, maybe Harold can, can say a bit more about that, but I think most of that is, is also communicated again in, in, in a very uh, specific audience. So for the queue managers, for instance, uh, yeah, more of course for, for the operators themselves, <laughs> so. Maybe, maybe I add a clarification here. So we have data in our QM database and there are monitoring data. Uh, the treasure, which Christian means, uh, is the monitoring data of each plant, uh, which is measured at each plant and stored at each plant. So that's their data and saved there. Uh, the QM database contains some of these data, but just very basic operating data. Uh, the QM database is made for um, uh, doing the QM process, basically. Um, so please separate this a little bit. Monitoring data are the measured data of each plant and they should take care of them and, and save it in a, in a secure way. And they have to be aware that it is their, uh, uh, their well-able data which they should use. Uh, we just ask them uh, to provide some basic data for doing this benchmarking. This benchmarking is provided to each, each plant operator and of course we do uh, overall uh, evaluation of, of the QM processes and the plants and their performance based on benchmarks and, and other things. And this is partly public, um, the results of it, the data itself are not public and we are not allowed to, to pub, uh, uh, publish them. But, but I think the QM database is not what Christian meant. I meant it, it's, it's the, the measurements uh, of each plant.